Welcome back to another episode and a brand new season of Sunshine on Lathe with Whitport Athletic. Our second year in the Football League, in League Two. Uh, obviously, we stayed up fairly comfortably in the end, but we were just, we were all over the place. Uh, I guess the best way to describe us, we were consistently inconsistent. However, I do think that we were just kind of average. And that's fine. That's what we expected. I think it just made us look better or worse in certain parts of the season because of the weird clumps of games we tended to get. And I think the fixtures are a little bit more streamlined this year. So we shouldn't really have the same issue. And I really do think this summer we've actually done quite well. Um, I think for whatever reason, our reputation has gone up just enough that we now can start to get some of those scraps from the Premier League sides uh, when they release players. Uh, not the good ones. Uh, I mean, there's some good players, but like the really good release players. We did nearly sign one guy and I was gutted uh, when he eventually chose to go to Brentford. But my point is, Brentford are a championship club. Of course he would choose to go to Brentford. I'm amazed we've managed to get some of the ones that we actually have done. There's also been a lot of outs, a lot of ins. We've really had a big rotation of the squad. Some players that may you might thought would have left have actually signed some new deals for us, which I think is kind of useful. Also, since it's the start of the week, it's time to thank new patrons. This week it is Stamero. Thank you so much for the huge patronage, my friend. That is incredibly generous of you and everyone else over there as well. His, as part of the patron, because you're on that tier, um, he decided to retire the number 12 shirt at the club, meaning that we will no longer have a number 12 shirt because that is the 12th man. And I really do like that idea. Uh, maybe we should retire the number 22 shirt as well, eh, Birmingham? So Dagenham uh, actually won the playoffs, so they've gone back-to-back -back promotion. So I guess, you know, th there's, there's a chance. We also got nearly 500 grand just for staying in the league, which is pretty cool. We've got a decent amount of money coming in from solidarity payments, TV revenue and whatnot, but I do want a cup run. I want to get to the FA Cup second round this year. It's my, mon my one big task, although I really do think that top half this year is a chance, is our sort of task. Although, honestly, I think if things click right, we could achieve more. Thomas was player of the year, no surprises. Jacob Wakeling and Luke Billum both signed new contracts. Jacob Wakeling, I think, did get more money. Uh, and so did Billum. I think they both doubled their wages, or certainly Billum did. But nevertheless, they wanted like over a thousand before and they were happy to take a bit less. Now, I was able to leverage a bit more because we had a larger wage budget, but still. I think the main reason was that no one was interested in either of the two players. They had no wanted clubs. And as a result, they were either going to get released and potentially retire, like Ben Mills, who has retired, or have to do something else. So let's quickly show the outs and then, well, you know what you're here for. Obviously, there'll be more players brought in potentially, but we've really got, um, I think I've signed a big batch. So players that have left the club this summer, O'Reilly, obviously, because Simba Kasimba, sad to see him go, but he has left. Sam Carter along with him, Harry Hammett, who had one really good season for us, Kwame Osigwe, and Tommy Williams. Uh, the reason Tommy Williams left and not someone like Defty, although obviously Defty's better, is that we had other players coming in that I didn't feel that we needed Tommy Williams to stay in that position. Now, again, we've still got a decent amount of wage budget left. However, I am looking at signing a guy on loan from Colton Chester that would be our highest paid player but I really wanted him for a couple of years and we might actually get him. Anyway, let's talk about the ins because there's been no other permanent outs which is nice. The first of which is Dave Morton. He was just I was looking at the left hand side and thinking okay if Luke Billum's going to leave and we've got Michael Lee there we need some other options. So we brought in Dave Morton on £725 a week so you can see the wages are starting to go up but we had the budget this time. He's six foot tall but nice and pacey. Decent technicals crossing, dribbling, first touch. He's not bad even at the defensive aspects with his seven tackling. Now he does like a little bit on the mental side of things with his aggression and work rate so I'm a little bit concerned there but I do still think he's got a lot of quality that could hopefully see us through at this level and for free and all of the signings have been free this summer not a single transfer fee paid I was determined to make sure that happened I, I like the guy I think you know six goals four assists in the preseason matches he's only 18 years old we've got we've gone really really uh youthful this season I do think that was important so that we can really generate some stuff I think the players are gonna oh, look at that he's already worth 350,000 pounds for a player that we didn't pay anything for Next up is another from Manchester City. It's Russell Nevitt, uh, probably friends in the Manchester City Youth Academy. We really were, we're basically like the island of lost toys at the moment. Um, if you're released by a big club, we're like an academy to bring you back through. It's like what Glenn Hoddle did in Spain. We're doing on the Isle of Life. Come here, stay for the sun and the wind off of the North Sea, but less said, about, less said about that, the better, and play a bit of football. Stay for the football. Again, fairly tall, fairly solid, but decent crossing and dribbling. I really like Russell Nevitt, and I think long-term he could be an excellent left-back for us. Um, again, not on bad wages. And one of the things about signing the younger players is that generally speaking, they don't command as big wages as perhaps a 24 year old and yes okay they're not as good but you get a chance to mold them next is ivan stojanovic who weirdly when he first signed his potential was three stars and my scouts seem to have like reconsidered how good he was because uh, i was a little bit like oh okay we've made a bit of a mistake there but it seems that they've changed their mind about him so again he was the guy to come play on that right side now he probably won't start i feel like simon defty will probably still start Ooh, my, my blinds are going crazy uh, but i think long term again the young swede now 
He's not on big money either. And that was without international clauses because he's Swedish. And I was like, oh, okay, this guy might get capped someday. Got to be careful. Again, 18 years old, fine. Just building out this squad with some young talent, which is kind of what we wanted to do. And we've done pretty well with it this season. Now, some of the personalities in some of these guys are not the best. And I'll be the first to admit that. But it's one of those situations where you really can't afford to be picky when you get a lot of the other attributes and you're getting these players for free. So you'll see a lot of low determination on some of these guys. And it's a shame, but maybe we can change that with some mentoring. I don't think we'll be able to make it that drastically different, but it's worth a crack. Then we've got Michael Idehen, who again was rated slightly less, but it might just be because my uh, coaches aren't as good at identifying players as my scouts are. So actually he might be more like a four-star player, but we'll have to see. Basically, we needed a new goalkeeper. I wasn't happy with Ben Winterbottom. Uh, Michael Idehen came in. He, I actually signed him before I was looking at the other guy. There was a guy called David Brannigan. He was released by Liverpool. And you might notice some of these players are from reasonably big sides, but there was a few that were like top, top tier, i.e. their current ability was much much, much higher. And they were a bit older as well. He was released. I brought him in on trial. He was five star, five star. I thought, yes, we'll just immediately offer him a contract. And he didn't want that much money. He was only going to be about £800 a week. But then you get your Brentfords and your championship clubs, and it was just never going to happen. But we still managed to scrounge ourselves a few of these players. And Michael Idahan probably will be our first choice goalkeeper. And one of the last sort of big free signings is Ben Johnson, who's coming from Chelsea to play on the right hand side. I said I wanted a um, Ben Putman Cartley of the right. And I feel like as much as he isn't perfectly him, He's decent in his physicals, although he does like jumping reach, so he's not the tallest. He does shoot from distance, which we're going to have to try and work on because he doesn't have good long shots. Um, but the key thing about him is his aggression isn't fantastic, but he's got good work rate. I think we could probably work on this. Decent technical abilities in the areas we want from that side. His tackling is pretty piss poor, but that's what you kind of expect. I think he could genuinely be it. Although, again, with the low determination, it's a side effect of that. I and mean, that might cost us at times this season, but we'll have to see. And then we've also got James Dale, who was released, I think, possibly even a year ago by Bristol City. The main reason I brought this guy in is because I wanted another pressing forward at the club and he kind of fits that bill with his good work rate, decent-ish stamina. He's better in some of the technical areas as well than Curtis Thomas. Now, it costs us £700 a week again, but we had so much money. Uh, for those of you that missed the analysis video, we got ten grand a week in wage budget to spend. Now, I haven't spent it all. We've got about four and a half left, which could come down a lot if I sign the guy from Colchester. And the final free signing that we've actually made, there's some lo loan signings too, is Jed Vernon, uh, a DM that we signed from Arsenal. Now, I was a bit unsure of whether we'd actually be able to get this guy, but we did. He's got The reason I was interested in Jed Vernon the most is because his mentals and physicals are insane for an 18 year old. Um, he's tall as well, which is quite nice, but he's got just good physicals across the board. He could work on his pace and acceleration a little bit, but great work rate, great teamwork, aggression, determination as well. Uh, somehow still light hide, but hey, he's a determined light hide bugger. The first of which is John Richardson. Now, this guy I really like. He's basically like, I signed him before Jed Vernon. Uh, he's basically like Jed Vernon plus uh, because he has a few, I mean, this is the key thing. He could play a regista. We're starting to finally find the players that could play that. He's consistent. Uh, he is a little on the injury prone side, which is a bit of bit of a shitter. But for a free track, not free. But I mean, it's not free at all. Actually, we're paying nine hundred pounds a week to Huddersfield to have him for the year. But he reminds me of Regan Booty, and I can't really shake that. Particularly as he played for Huddersfield too, or did anyway. He was on loan at Chesterfield last year, and he was part of Chesterfield's team that won the league. So there's something there for me. We also got Alan Collins on loan from Barnsley for the season. I, Barnsley have some really good players that they're always putting out for loan and they'll never let me have them. And I thought, screw it, we're just going to keep trying. And eventually they let us have Alan Collins. Now, he's not the tallest and he's not the quickest, but he's reasonable. Decent enough mentals, solid enough physicals. He's just going to... He's just going to slot in. We, we lost a couple of players, obviously, from loan signings last year, like uh, Kai Forsyth and whatnot. And I did want to strengthen that a little bit. So I thought, you know what? to have him for a season for Alan Collins. Let's bring him in. Let's give him a crack. And the last player that I've currently brought in is Lee suk who's coming from Portsmouth. Uh, 22 years old, slightly older. But the main reason to bring him in for me was, was quite a simple one. I did just want a little bit of extra quality in that strike. I wanted to have backups to both Wakeling, since he's now here for another year, and Curtis Thomas. And we've got that with James Dale and now uh, LSJ, Lee suk -Yay. So I thought on £600 a week, we can't really say no. So there's one more guy uh, that I'm trying to bring in. Obviously, I might bring more. I've got some players on trial, but I don't want to overdo it with the budget just in case we screw it up this year. But you might recognise the name Jose Maria Laranaga. Uh, he played for Morecambe uh, one season. He played for Colchester last year and did really well. And they've actually allowed him to come on loan potentially. Um, but it will cost us £1,900 a week. But he, is so, he has like 17 crossing. Now, I know it's making the squad very, very youthful indeed, but I really do think it was worthwhile at the time. We're playing AFC File. We've beaten them three times in a row in this save. Let's go out there and grab our first win of the season. Hopefully, hopefully. Bolton already won their first game. So, who will start? There's a lot of players. Obviously, there's another guy I've got on trial called Matt Jacobs. There's another pressing forward. Um, the reason he's in the first team squad is because I wanted to test him out and how, see how he actually played in the friendlies. So, there's still potential for a couple more signings, but it's unlikely. So, switcheroo. Defty will come in, as to be expected. Uh, Michael Lee on the left-hand side at the moment, because obviously uh, Dave Morton's injured. And Michael Lee has trained really well in the summer. I've worked on their sort of, um, the, the strategies to 
look at their training and see what areas we can prove in a little bit further. So we're going to go with Alan Collins and Kai Knight at the back there. Will Harding will be on the bench. We've got tons of options this year. Um, Thomas and Dale, I think, is Wakeling playing or not? I'm probably going to go with um, LSJ and Thomas for today. We've got a, we've actually got striker options too. It's fantastic. But I'm also going to make sure that um, Richardson... I want to have a look at the situation with Richardson and see. Because we've got a lot of options in this area too, though, with the likes of Terry Bishop, Adabati. There's, there's tons of options. So potentially, this role will change from DM to either a Regista, potentially, or a deep-line playmaker. Not entirely sure just yet. So the bench will be Putnam, Kiley, Will Harding, Billum, Dale, Galvin, who signed a new contract as well, uh, Daniel Oljo, and, of course, Kalantari. So options, options galore. I think the squad is stronger than it was before. We'll see how the defensive uh, midfield setup goes whether I want to change those roles around, because I am tempted, I've got to be honest, but we will have to see. I'm very excited about this. I've also set up set piece takers, so we should be good, um, because although Dave Morton isn't playing, he's got excellent delivery from free kicks. Oh, totally off topic to that. The board have said that we're going to delay another stadium expansion by a year, because apparently we've actually got to get the stadium up to 7,200. In addition to that, you might notice I'm not wearing the stripy top. I don't know where it is. I feel terrible. I'm going to find it for next season. I couldn't find it last time either, and I've had a good old rummage, and I still don't know where it's gone. And I know sometimes people say, oh, you should use, this, you should experiment with this or that or the other, but we have a tactic that's got us to where we are, and I'm, I really don't like changing things if I have no particular reason to. I don't think we underperformed last year in any way, um, so I don't think there's anything tactically wrong with that. I think we're just going to need to get better players slowly, and we'll improve. And I've got to be honest, I'm pretty excited about our prospects this season. I genuinely think that there's a top-half team in here, and with the right, maybe if we can get Ladanaga as well, there might even be potentially a playoff push, which is really what I was hoping for uh, this season. You know, there's an extra, you know, it's an extra playoff spot, essentially, in this league, because there's three promotion automatics, so you never know. Having a passer in the team like Richardson, though, is really going to help. Come on. Wow, Thomas is well outside. Oh, goodness me. Um, well, we've dominated them so far, but nobody's getting across the closest down. McGee! And it's just wide of the goal, and Whitport are not behind. Is Who did I put in goal today? Was it Winterbottom, or was it Ihata? Great little first touch. That's what I like to see. Goes past two. Can he slip it through? Somebody might go through himself. And it's a good save by Langley, but this is a start. This is the kind of start I want to see from us. Creating shots, having chances. Michael Lee cleared away again. Defty, put it back out wide for Thomas. Knight gets the shot away as well. Really well played. This is super duper encouraging so far. Is that Vashon Nerfville? Oh, and Johnson's in there again. This is this is what I mean. Johnson's through, and it's a great save again by the filed goalkeeper. That is the sort of thing that was missing when Putman Kartley wasn't in the team last season. And now we've actually seen it a couple of times already from Johnson. And it's saved again. And oh, Defty with the poor effort. Wow, what a start. I mean, filed are under the cosh here. If we don't win this game 2 or 3 nil, I'll be very surprised that Knight gets the header in now. We've certainly picked up where we left off from a chance creation perspective, which is a great sign. But what I... Oh, no. <laughs> and we've apparently picked up where we left off from giving our opposition chances, i.e. we don't. Well, actually, to be fair, that's the second clear cut. Absolutely unbelievable. Their first shot on target after 22 minutes, and we've been battering them for the opening period of the match, and they've got the lead through Raquel Pike. Unbelievable. I don't know what we have to do, to be honest, guys. I don't know. And we're not even committing fouls anymore. And Lee, what a save! What a first heart. I mean... In so many ways, this is probably one of our best first half performances of the save. Uh, Johnson with the header and it's just wide. There we go. Great pressure. Galvin. Oh, nice work from Ryan Galvin. Lee's in again. And it's a lovely finish from Michael Lee. That is the kind of finishing we want to see from that left-hand side. Michael Lee with a lovely little, just calm finish, bottom corner, one or here. But the pressure, I mean, admittedly, they caused their own problems there. But nice work from Ryan Galvin here just to go past the defender, draw them in, drop it around the side for Michael Lee. One touch to set himself, left foot strike, bottom corner, 1-1. One, one. Really good goal, thoroughly deserved. And Michael Lee's opened his account for the year. Fair enough. Let's have this. Second half. Go out there. If we do that again in the second half, there's no way that we don't score a goal. Surely. But you could still get this back. Not quite. Budge. And, oh no, surely not. Are we just cursed? Like, seriously, are we just cursed in some way? It feels like this is just every game. Uh, it's, it's one game sample size this season, but it does get a little bit irksome after a while. Um, like, <laughs> oh, come on. Can he find another assist? He's got one already tonight. Spread it. Go on, Ryan. For Defty. Around the side for Johnson. Oh, is that going to be a penalty? It is a penalty. Who's going to take it? I assume Curtis Thomas. I mean, hey, sometimes it takes a little bit of luck to get the penalty. Curtis Thomas steps up, and it's slid into the bottom corner. First goal of the season for CT. Hopefully, it'll be the first of many. Uh, we are back level again. Need to start pulling our weight in this match a little bit, but at least Curtis Thomas has done well. Ben Johnson did brilliantly to win the penalty. It's his first sort of real contribution to the game, although I have enjoyed his pressing play. And it's 2 all here. Let's see if we can complete the comeback properly this time. Michael Lee, Ryan Galvin, ball in. Curtis Thomas and Johnson with the shot struck. Well saved. Come on, CT. Pop this on someone's head. Get Kai Knight in there. It is in there, but with a bit of space now. Connor Teal. 
finds Curtis Thomas, loads of room for the cross, and Michael Lee... I can't do it. Yes, he can, and he has it. It's 3-2. Michael Lee with an absolute screamer. That is a fantastic contribution today from Michael Lee. Um, I talked a lot about what I wanted to do with him last season and how eventually I felt like he could be a winger for us because he had all the attributes I wanted from him. And this is just tremendous. Sets himself up, left footed strike, his second goal of the game, and that might well be the winner for us in the end. That is a tremendous effort from Michael Lee, and I think we deserve that. Here we go. It's going to be Whitport Athletic 3, AFC Filed 2. Unless, no, not quite. Uh, we're going to get away with it in the end. I think that defensively, we definitely struggled in places and they did create some chances. But I think in the end, we probably just about deserve the win there. Um, two goals from Michael Lee, the Curtis Thomas penalty. We gave up some soft goals. And hopefully when the defenders start to get their links up a bit more, that will definitely help us. But we've hit the ground running, actually scored chances today, despite creating a lot in the first half. Michael Lee, what a performance, really pleased. Now for Uno, Five might be one of the worst teams in this division, but the fact is getting an early win is really, really good for morale. Gets the players bed in. To see Michael Lee score a brace is a really, really nice sign. Hopefully get the striker scoring too soon. Although, CT did get the pen. So, next game, of course, will be against newly promoted Crawley Town. So a chance, really, to go two for two. And I feel like we probably should do, uh, given their league position, you'd have to say. So we're probably going to come back and do Cheltenham away from home at the Johnny Rocks Stadium uh, as well. So that's going to be good. We've got some interesting ones in there with obviously Notts County, but Wickham and Grimsby in there as well. I think Notts County is a winnable game in the cup, potentially to get ourselves a big draw in the next round. You never know. So if you've enjoyed this episode, I really hope you have. And looking forward to the new season. I sure as hell am. Um, I'm pleased with the way we've started. I think we can keep improving. And hopefully this year have a really, really good year. So drop a like on the video. That'd be tremendous. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. I'll stream on Twitch on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and usually at the weekends as well. Uh, so go follow over there. And I'll see you guys very, very soon for some more of this hopefully good season. Uh, yeah, hold your gun, Capybara. Bye-bye.